everybody, welcome back. So last episode we took a look at improving this login form. It looks pretty nice now, but the main issue we have is that after we log in, it keeps us on this login page, and that is not what we want. If the login is successful, we want to automatically redirect to, say, the home page. So that is what we're going to focus on in this video, and it's actually a pretty frequently requested topic on this channel just the idea of navigating between views from inside other views. So I'm pretty excited to cover that in this video. As we recall, the navigator is the object that controls the current view model. So we have this property for current view model. So all we need to do is if our login is successful, then we need to set the current view model on our navigator to the home view model and then it'll display the corresponding home view. Now unfortunately with our current navigation setup that is not going to work and I'm going to show you guys that real quick. So to do this redirect we're going to need our navigator inside of our login command so let's go ahead and bring that in. I'll create a field for that and I like to put underscores before my fields. Unfortunately, Visual Studio does not feel the same way. I probably have to go into some configuration and fix that. But anyways, we have our navigator now. So if our login is successful, all we're gonna do is use our navigator and call the update current view model command. So we need to execute that command and we need the pass it a view type. And the view type we want is home. So first off, I don't even like calling this update current view model command from inside code because it takes in this parameter that is just an object. So really you could pass anything in here. I mean it's not strongly typed is what I'm trying to say. So I feel like it's a little bit unsafe just using this execute command. So we're going to get away from that after I go over why this isn't even going to work in the first place. So there we go. So now our login command needs a navigator and we can go into our login view model and we can get a navigator from here like that and then pass that navigator into our login command but now our login view model needs a navigator so we can go into our login view model factory and just get one here and of course this factory is registered with our dependency injection container so it'll automatically get injected and then we can pass it into our login view model. So let's go ahead and get a field for that. So let's go ahead and pass that navigator in and now I think we're ready to test this out. So let's go ahead and run this and I'll show you guys the problem that we have. Okay, so here we go. So our issue is that we have a circular dependency. So this is pretty awful and the issue is that our navigator takes a simple trader view model factory and then as we know this view model factory takes our login view model factory which takes our navigator so we have the circular dependency and it's a little bit confusing to wrap your head around but basically the issue is that our navigator is responsible for creating views but then our views also need our navigator as well so that is unacceptable and what we're going to do to fix that is go into our navigator and as we said our navigator is responsible for creating views but then our views need our navigator so what we need to do with our navigator is take away its responsibility for creating view models so let's go ahead and we're literally just going to wipe out this update current view model command and all our navigator is going to do is hold the current view model for our application. And really this kind of makes sense because our navigator is state, so it should really just hold this state. That's all that matters. So now into our real navigator, that means we no longer need this update current view model command on here. And we also don't need this simple trader view model factory passed in, which was really like the root cause because this factory is responsible for creating the view models, but then our view models also need a navigator. Again, circular dependencies, they're just a little bit hard to wrap your head around, but that is the gist of it. So now our navigator just has this current view model. 
So this creates a problem because now we no longer have an update current view model command and we need that for navigating between our tabs on our navigation bar. Now what we're going to do is put that update current view model command on our main view model and this makes sense because that navigation bar is really tied to our main view model. We can even look at our main window and it even has the navigation bar on it. So what we're going to do is we are going to have the update current view model command on our main view model and then the data context for our navigation bar is no longer going to be the navigator. And the reason the data context was the navigator is because if we go to our navigation bar it needs a binding to an update current view model command. Our update current view model command is going to be on our main view model so our data context by default for the navigation bar is going to be that main view model so we can just not even set a data context. So now back on our main view model let's go ahead and set that command. So we need the update current view model command and we can just make this read only by getting rid of the set. Let's make sure we import command and let's go ahead and set that down here. So that's going to be a new update current view model command and it needs a navigator and a view model factory. So let's pass in the navigator and now we need a simple trader view model factory passed in as well. So let's get that from our constructor as well. So this is an i simple trader. I think it's a yeah, it's a root simple trader view model factory because this can give us any view model that we want. And let's just call this view model factory. And let's get a field for that. Now we can pass this in as well like that. And now instead of calling the navigator update current view model command, which no longer exists, we're going to call our own update current view model command like that. Okay, so now we still have an issue back in our navigation bar. So since the data context for this navigation bar is now the main view model, we have an update current view model command, but we also need a binding to a current view model. Now that is on our navigator, which we have right here. So we can just go and set this binding to the navigator dot current view model like that. And I think that's actually all we need to do. So that should actually solve our circular dependency. And we are now back where we started, where we can still use the navigation bar to go through the application. So let's go ahead and test this out. And we get errors real quick. Let's see what's going on. Okay, so we're not going to be calling this anymore. So let's go ahead and just comment that out for now. Just so we can make sure that our navigation bar still works. Alright, so I'm logged in. And now go to the home view. Alright, that is still working. So now we have fixed our navigation. And now we're ready to make some adjustments in this login command so that we can re-navigate to the correct view. And now that we still have this navigator, really all we need to do is set the navigator.currentViewModel to a new home view model. So let's do that. But then our home view model needs a major index listing view model. So let's do one of those. And then that needs a major index service. And as you can see, this is getting out of hand. So why don't we just use our home view model factory that's registered with our dependency injection container so that we can just get all those dependencies because really we shouldn't be doing up anything anyways since that's what our dependency injection container is for we don't want to be doing this so to do that we could just inject our i simple trader view model factory for a home view model like that and then pass that down but what I'm going to do is actually create a new interface and a new object that will just handle the navigation and the view model creation for us. Because I don't want to have to pass in a navigator 
and a simple trader view model factory just to redirect to a different page. I feel like we need some kind of other abstraction here. So what I am going to do is actually just put this in our navigators. I'm going to create a new item and this is going to be an interface and it's going to be an I re-navigator. And what this interface is going to do is re-navigate. So it's going to just be a void because it doesn't have to return anything. And it's just going to be a simple re-navigate method like that. And let's go ahead and implement this interface with a class. And I am going to call this the view model factory re-navigator. So what this class is going to take, first off it's going to implement that interface, let's do that. What this class is going to take is our navigator of course because we need that to actually switch views. So let's get that in here. And then it's also going to take a view model factory so that we can set the navigator current view model to the result of a view model factory create view model. So this is going to need a field for a simple trader I simple trader view model factory and of course this is a generic type. So that means this is going to be generic and we'll just make a type for the type of view model and why we are doing this is because we can pretty much pass in any simple trader view model factory to this renavigator so we can use this class to renavigate to any view model that we want so let's call this the view model factory and then let's pass all of this in through a constructor like that and now we can just use our view model factory and create a view model okay so the issue we have here is that the current view model is a view model base and we are using this generic t view model and our create view model is going to return a t view model but a t view model could be anything it could be a freaking integer but our current view model needs a view model base so what we can do is put a constraint on t view model and make sure it inherits from view model base so that means T view model has to be a view model base, such as a home view model. So now we have this renavigator, and let's go ahead back into our login command. And instead of injecting all of this, let's just inject a renavigator like that. Let's generate a field for that. We can get rid of our navigator, and now we can go ahead and just use this renavigator down here. So if our login was successful, we can call renavigator dot renavigate, and it'll handle the renavigation for us. Now, of course, we need to make sure that we pass in the correct renavigator. So let's go ahead and set that up. So first off, we need to go to our login view model because this doesn't take a navigator anymore. It takes an I renavigator. So let's go ahead and get that through the constructor and pass that in. And now our login view model factory, we no longer need a navigator, we need a renavigator. So let's go ahead and just change all of that, make this an I renavigator. And then we're going to pass that into our login view model. And now this login view model factory, that is what's registered with our dependency injection container. So let's head up there and let's pass in the correct renavigator. So we have this login view model factory that we register right here. So we actually need to switch the way that we register this login view model factory. So by doing it like this and just specifying the type of the implementation that we want, what it's going to do is automatically look at our container and find all of these implementations. But 
for our i renavigator, we aren't going to just register one renavigator. So for example, we're not going to say services, we're not going to add a singleton for an i renavigator and then pass in some kind of view model factory renavigator for let's say the home view model like that. And the reason we're not doing that is because we might want other view models to use an i renavigator and we don't want all of them to renavigate to the home view model so we can't just register one i renavigator so that means we're not going to be able to register our login view model factory like this we're going to actually have to specify how we want our login view model factory to be created so what we can do is pass in a callback here that takes our service container and we can say new login view model factory. So this is the actual view model factory that we want. And this constructor takes an I authenticator. And what we can do is use this callback. So I should actually spell this out. And this services is going to represent our built service collection. So we're going to be able to access our services that we registered. So we need to get our authenticator from that service provider. So let's call services dot get required service. We need an I authenticator like that. And now this is where we can specify our I renavigator. So we need a new view model factory renavigator for a home view model. Let me move this to a new line too. And this is going to need a navigator and a view model factory for a home view model. So we can just get those from our collection of services as well. So let's use our services, get required services, and I navigator. And then we also need our service for a simple trader view model factory for a home view model. So let's just copy this. And then we need to change this to an I simple trader view model factory for a home view model. Just copying it right up here just to show that we do register it. So we can put that right there. And there we go. We successfully pass in the renavigator that we want for the home view model. So let's go ahead and actually test this out. All right, so I'm going to log in. And there we go, we are now on the home page. And I would say the best part about this implementation is that if we want to switch our login, say after we log in, we want to go to the portfolio view model, then I can just change this view model factory renavigator to a portfolio view model like that, and then pass in a portfolio view model factory to that navigator and now if I log in it takes me to the portfolio page instead so all of our navigation for our application is simply controlled all in our dependency ejection container so it's super flexible I love it so anyways that is how we're gonna be renavigating between views in simple trader and I really think it's a super effective way to handle navigation for an MVVM application. Anyways, I hope you guys learned something from this video. I hope it wasn't too confusing. So if you have any questions, criticisms, or comments, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. But other than that, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.